Christ is risen. Christ has risen indeed, alleluia. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts, the seventh chapter, verses 55 through 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, 15 and 16. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God, truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. This is the word of the Lord.
asked according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. For my homily today, I wanted to um, read a little bit about a woman who we honor on May 13th. Her name is Frances Perkins. Um, and I just want to read the description of her life. Frances Perkins was the first woman to serve a president of the United States as a member of the cabinet. Born in Boston on April 10th, 1880, and educated at Mount Holyoke College and Columbia University, Perkins was passionate about the social problems occasioned by the continuing effects of industrialization and urbanization. As a young adult, she discovered the Episcopal Church and was confirmed at the Church of the Holy Spirit in Lake Forest, Illinois on June 11th, 1905, and she remained a faithful and active Episcopalian for the remainder of her life. After moving to New York, she became an advocate for industrial safety and persistent voice for the reform of what she believed were unjust labor laws. This work got the attention of two of New York's governors, Al Smith and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in whose state administration she took part. President Roosevelt appointed her to a cabinet post as Secretary of Labor, a position she would hold for 12 years. As Secretary of Labor, Perkins would have a major role in shaping the New Deal legislation signed into law by President Roosevelt, most notably the establishment of the Social Security Program. During her years of public service, Frances Perkins depended upon her faith, her life of prayer, and the guidance of her church for the support she needed to assist the United States and its leadership to face the enormous problems of the time. During her time as Secretary of Labor, she would take time away from her duties on a monthly basis and make a retreat with the All Saints Sisters of the Poor in nearby Cantonsville, Maryland. She spoke publicly of how the incarnation informed her conviction that humans ought to work with God to create a just Christian social order. Following her public service, she became a professor of industrial and labor relations at Cornell. She remained active in teaching social justice advocacy and in the mission of the Episcopal Church. She was an eloquent example of lay ministry, writing that, quote, 
The special vocation of the laity is to conduct and to carry on the worldly and secular affairs of modern society in order that all may be maintained in health and decency. She died in New York City on May 14th, 1965. I think of uh, Frances Perkins and today and lift her up for our reflection uh, today because I think she is a, a wonderful uh, example of what it means to live out your baptismal call in the life of the world. We as Christians uh, have an opportunity today in the midst of all the things that are going on around us um, to really step in to that fray and also step into the public square and talk about um, what our values are and how it should impact um, policy, uh, how it, it should impact um, the tone of the conversations that we have in the public square, and also how it should impact um, our daily lives as Christians, um, living out our, um, our values in terms of where we place our resources and our energy. I call to mind today uh, Frances Perkins and lift her up as an example for us of what it means to not retreat from um, the things that um, the ills of society, but actually press in on it um, so we can create change uh, in the world, uh, a world that is much more reflective and in alignment with the kingdom of God. And we know what that looks like uh, and how that should look based on uh, John's gospel reading this morning that we heard from Deacon Mike. This um, farewell narrative, in a sense, brings to us and reminds us of um, that there are dwelling places that are prepared for us. And so the future is less, um, needs to be less of a concern for us just in terms of our own personal future and our eternal well being. And what we need to do is then take that energy and the, um, the energy that we would put into that fear, right, of being concerned about the future and actually put that into, um, making the present a better place, not just for others, but for us as well. And uh, the gospel is instructive on how we should go about doing that. I invite you on this day to consider the gifts that God has given you, the many blessings that are um, within you and outside of you, the incarnational, the life-giving presence of Christ that resides around us. And then not stop there, but ask yourself the question of what am I being called to live out in my baptismal call? Francis Perkins did that um, with extraordinary um, talent and effort and courage she is um, a beacon of hope and promise. We as followers of this Christ, of this Jesus, um, have the capacity within ourselves, have the capacity within the um, community that we are a part of, communities that we are a part of, to break open the bonds that oppress Our affirmation of faith. We believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life. 
We believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken pieces of our universe. We believe in spirit deep within us, advocate and guide, who lives with us eternally. We believe in God's resurrection created world, where all things are fixed and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, within, God yesterday, today, and forever, the three in one, the one in three. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Bless you and raise you to new life, both now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.